We bless God for his kindness and his love to each and every one of us today. Everlasting King of glory. Father, thank you. Father, thank you for the month of April. Lord, we ask that you guide our prayers tonight. Find you in a deeper way as we push through this darkness, tiredness, our body clocks. Father, we ask, Lord, that you will take us on a journey to pray for our friends, our communities. We thank you for the second quarter of 2022, for March, and now we thank you for April. We thank you, our Lord and our God. We bless your name. We bless your name. It is you that has made the heavens and the earth. It is you that has created us, revealed your beauty in creation, inspired the book that we are going to study, that you take us into a deeper understanding. We will know more about you and your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're taking our text from Psalm 146, verse 5. Psalm 146, verse 5. And we are in the season of hope. And so our word is hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. 146, verse 5, Psalm. Blessed are those whose help is in God, in the God of Jacob. Hope is faith in action. Hope is faith in action. It is hope that gets you through the night when darkness closes in on you. Hope is the belief that you are not permanently in the dark. Hope is the belief that you are not boxed in going through. And so as we be begin a new month and enter into the second half, second quarter of 2022, I encourage you to hope in the Lord. That is my word for you this month, that you should hope in the Lord. I need you to understand that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life and God's plan is to give you hope. Jeremiah 29, to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God wants to give us hope. So if you can surrender to the will of God, then you will have hope. If you can surrender to the will of God, you will have hope. Now, SL, how can I know what God's will is so that I can surrender to it? Because I have to know his will before I surrender. And the thing about God's will is that God reveals his will to you as you walk with him in obedience every single day. So don't ever imagine that you are going to, God is going to reveal his will. You just see this big rainbow in the sky. This is what my will is for you, Sister Anita. My will for you is X, Y, Z. No. For most people, God reveals his will step by step. So the key to finding God's will for your life is to surrender your life to serve the Lord. That is the key. When you can surrender your life to serve God. All of your tomorrows are wrapped up in the complete surrender to the Lord. That is how it works. James 4, 13 to 15. Now listen, you who say today or today there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Do you know how, how, you know, you know how it is when you've planned so many things? You know, you plan X, Y, Z, I'm going to do this. Next week, I'm doing this. I'm traveling on this date. This is our, these are our summer plans. And then one thing happens. One thing happens. And all your plans get turned upside down. It just takes one thing. There are some times that God will guide us in a way that at first we are not too happy about. I believe in everything that goes on in my life that God is aware. So I've learned to submit myself 
to the will of God. And I know that God works all things for my good. So even though something does not look good at present, I know that it will look good. It will, it, it will be good at the end of it all. I remember as a young girl, I never really want, I really didn't know what I was going to be in future. I didn't know. I had no idea what I was going to be, what I was going to do. In fact, I could say I had little or no ambition. My desire was always, I was just going to be a housewife. And I remember as a child, you know, when, when parents go to your, they wanted to be a doctor, they wanted to be a lawyer, they wanted to be a nurse, they wanted to be a teacher. I wrote there, I want to be a housewife. Drive my red Ferrari. That was all I wanted to do. I guess I always wanted to live the soft life. That was all I wanted to do. My mother said she was so embarrassed. All I wanted to do was be. But as I was growing older, I found, as I grew older, I was a nurturer. I liked people. Genuinely liked people. I liked to take care of people. I remember as I grew older, some people said maybe I'll be a nurse. Some people said maybe I'll, I'll own a hotel. I actually did a hotel management course to see if this was the line of business, the line of career I wanted to go into. So I had this nurturing people. At a point, I then started a preschool. And in the preschool, I found I was an easy, I was an easy listener. People would talk to me and I'd find myself encouraging people. I found myself wanting to help people. And as I began to develop my spiritual life even more, I found that prayer and praying became my default. And I would direct people to prayer. I would direct people to God. And around 10 years ago, I began, I began to sense God's call to full-time ministry. And I thought to myself, this is not possible. I knew God either wanted me to be an evangelist, a missionary, or go into full-time Christian service. And I was just like, nope, it's not going to work. And I thought of all manner of, of reasons why I could not or I should not become a minister of the gospel. But finally, in 2015, I surrendered to God's will. The word I got then was James 5.16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man have left much. And I realized it had nothing to do with me. It had all to do with the power of God and my obedience. And I came to God's will than to risk doing anything else and being out of God's will. So this evening, I just want to encourage you to surrender to God's will. I said yesterday that God hasn't called us to success. He has called us to obedience. He has called us to obedience. He hasn't said any of us should be good because we are not good in ourselves, but he has said we should be faithful. Give your future to God. Live one day at a time. Even when things don't seem to be making sense to you, you have this promise, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will direct your paths. Understand this, that once you're in God's will, nothing else matters. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. Whatever happens to you, Whatever happens to you matters to God and he will carry you. He will carry you. God is your refuge and God is your strength. God will never direct you into any work that is contrary to the word of God. Never. Never. So you must determine to be a student of God for the rest of your life. 2 Timothy 2.15, work hard so God can approve you. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. I found this so amazing when I read, I, I read the, these statistics. A few years ago, a survey was made of Americans and their beliefs about the Bible. And I think this cuts truly across the whole world. 
82% of Americans surveyed believe that the Bible teaches God helps those who help themselves. Let me tell you this. Every time you say that, that is in the Bible. God helps those who help themselves is not in the Bible. It is, it is unscriptural. It is unscriptural. It does not appear in the Bible. There is nowhere it says that in the Bible. So if you're one of those people who says God helps those who, God has never said that. He doesn't say that. He says, come unto me, all who labor and are heavily, and I will refresh you. I, refresh you. I will help you. 38% of people believe that it doesn't matter what religious faith you follow because all of them teach the same lesson. Say lie. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. All people will experience the same outcome after death, regardless of their spiritual beliefs, regardless of their religious belief or their lifestyle. Meanwhile, the Apostle John wrote, and this is the testimony, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has life, he who does not, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of Life. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. I also found out that 58% of Americans believe that the Bible is not totally accurate. That all it teaches is not true. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Peter 1, 20 to 21, above all prophets' own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 60% believe that Satan is not a living being, but Satan is just a symbol of evil. Jesus told us of being tempted by Satan in the desert. The Bible speaks of Satan being Lucifer. Satan's one mission is to keep people from turning to the true God, the creator of the universe. 55% of people believe that if a person is generally good or does things that are good for other people in their lifetime, they will earn a place in heaven. Haha. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 tells us otherwise. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith and not of yours no one can boast. 44% believe that when Jesus was on earth, he committed sin. The Apostle Peter, who served Jesus for over three years and observed his life and ministry, he wrote, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. First Peter, beloved, following God's will is an adventure. It is a real adventure. And I can say it because it's what I'm living today. Serving the Lord does not mean you are going to have a pain-free life. If you have any pastor, teacher, I don't know what you want to call them, that tell you that serving God has no challenges. They are telling you lies. They are telling you lies. If they say they don't have any challenges, they are telling you lies. They are either in the grave or they are in the grave. Following God's will does not mean you will live a life filled with joy all the time a life filled with joy and hope do you get me now do you understand me now because some people feel they just want to be happy all the time no you will have joy and you will have hope so my prayer for each of you today is that you will make choices to honor the lord in your life that is my prayer of no regrets what is God's will for my life what is God saying pertaining this at the point that you are going through that challenge you may not like it but I assure you that you will come out better at the end of the day in the mighty name of Jesus when you live a life of integrity it gives you hope if you choose to live a life of integrity a life of honesty and you make you make decisions, you say things, you say no to those things that dishonor God. You will have hope. You will have joy. If we turn our Bibles to Titus 2, elevation has appeared to men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions 
and to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly life in this present age. And we can do it. But you have to determine to yourself to live a life of integrity and purity. And so it means that a lot of things that you are doing that need to get, you need to get rid of. A lot of attachments you have, you need to get rid of. Determine to live a life of integrity and purity. Say to yourself, what is it I am doing that is outside the will of God? And, you know, save yourself for the person you are going to be married to. Not for that person, but do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. That way you are able to build a life in your relationship. And I say it, it's, it's, both, it's both ways. We seem to forget that character also counts with God. Look at your children and you, or look at your friends and you. Do you have a friend who you know does some really, really crazy things? And they, they come and tell you something, and deep down you know that this friend is telling you lies. Their character counts, isn't it? The same way your character counts. Do you think when you tell somebody who is close to you a story, you share something with them? So when you live a life of integrity, you will live a life without compromise. And as a follower of Christ, you have to choose not to conform to the standards of this world. If you have this sort of attitude though, you may not be very popular. But guess what? Romans 12 2 tells us, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Remember the story of Daniel. Daniel, as a teenager, lived a life of integrity without compromise. And when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon invaded Jerusalem and occupied the territory of Judah. He took captives from Jerusalem. Among the captives were Daniel and his three friends. They were forced to travel 1,500 miles to Babylon. They suffered. They suffered. They really, really suffered. Daniel and his three friends were forced to learn a language, learn the call of God. They are God who is the creator of the universe. They refused to worship the gods of the Babylonians. See that in Daniel 1.8. But Daniel, along with his three friends, resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And Daniel asked for the chief official. Asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Regardless of the cost, they, were, they would have killed them. They said they will not defile themselves. I want us to remember different challenges we've had in the past where we compromised and we didn't need to compromise. Different times we make excuses. You tell a lie and you find out because you don't want to go, you don't want to do something, you then tell a lie. But then you find out that the day you were meant to do that thing, something else happened. So you shouldn't even have lied. God had already prepared that you would not have to do that thing. But you compromised. So, what have I learned? It takes courage to live for Jesus. It takes courage. Now understand why God said to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Of faith. They don't. If you're a coward, it will be difficult for you to be faithful. It will be difficult for you to have faith. It's difficult for a coward to follow Jesus. It takes courage to live a clean moral life when surrounded by immorality, which is why you have to be careful about your friends, your friendships, your circles. It takes courage to take a stand for Jesus when friends accuse you of being old-fashioned, strange, a religious fanatic. You pray all the time. Are you the one that killed Jesus? Can I get a witness? But 
One thing the Holy Spirit reminds me is this. SL, when you stand before Jesus, you are not going to be judged by what others think or say. You are going to be judged according to the choices you have made, either to receive Jesus as your Lord or to reject him and live for other people's gods. So, remember that the choices you make have... And we don't have any excuse. Because God has created every single one of us with the gift of making choices. All of us, we all have that gift of making the right choice. It is just that we also have the ability to put our will above the will of God. Remember, there's a promise in Psalm 146.5. Happy are the youth whose hope is in the Lord. God's plan is to give you and I hope. Jeremiah 29, 1. And so as we go into the next quarter of 2022, you have the promise that God is with us. Jesus will go with us. He will never leave us and he will not forsake us. So this evening, I will say to you, put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. Let us pray. Father and our God, we ask you this evening, even as we thank you for this new month of April, thank you for all you are going to do for us. Thank you already. You have known the end from the beginning. Father, we want to hear you saying to us, I am your hope. We want to hear this over every other voice that is speaking to us, Lord. Lord, your word says that you are the hope for the hopeless. So, Father, we are stretched out to grab you. We want to hold on to you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to fill us up with your hope. Give us a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. Our Father and our God, you know all those things in our heart that we barely dare to hope for. You know what our dreams are. You know what our, in, our, our, our desires are. Father, we give all these things to you, Lord. Father, we do this because we know that you can do more than we can ever imagine, Lord. Father, we know that even our wildest requests are no difficult for you to fulfill. God, you are our hope and we trust in you. Jesus, you are the hope of all who trust in you. You are the power of all who serve you. You are the wisdom of all who follow you. You are the uniter of all who worship you. We ask you, ask you just to grant us light at the beginning of this month. We ask you to fill us with your strength, boldness, according to your promises. Father, this, all our nations, where we reside, where we live, where we come from. Our nations are in need, Lord. They are in need of your love, this season of hope. Father, we humbly acknowledge our weaknesses and our failures all of us, as much as we complain about those in authority, for everybody that lives in these nations, we all, Lord, have one guilt or another that we are dealing with. Father, we ask that our eyes be fixed on you so that your name will be honored in our land in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in a world that is in despair right now, as we are still dealing with the COVID pandemic. Father, we're dealing with wars. 
economic hardship, terrorist attacks, oppression, weakness of man to man. You are our hope. In a world of darkness, you are our light. In a world of sorrow, Father, this evening we ask that you will help us share the hope of our hearts with one another. Father, enable us to give hope to others through the work you are doing among us. Father, we ask you to use us to transform all our nations, Father, and to spread your hope to every single corner of the, of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our different countries. May they flourish by the preaching of your word and by the praising of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Holy God, our only hope is in you. Father, we thank you for the past. We thank you for yesterday. We trust you for today. That all your promises will come to pass. That we can rest forever in your love. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our Father and our God, thank you even for the opportunity you have given us at this hour of the day to come together to hear your word, Lord. Father, we know you have spoken to us through your word this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which is spirit life to us father we depend on your word to live thank you for being faithful to this word lord father we pray that the word will grow and keep us doing your will in this life help us lord to understand your word well so that we can keep walking walking in your way in the mighty name of jesus christ we have prayed amen god bless each and every one of you i hope you've enjoyed this ministration this evening. We look forward to as many that will participate in our night vigil tonight on YouTube. Um, it's going to be interesting as it always is. We bless God always for what he continues to do for us at Rebirth. If you are interested in Rebirth, you want to find out more about our ministry, kindly visit www.rebirthrwc.org. Um, have a fantastic weekend. I love you with the love of the Lord. Welcome to your month of resurrection and divine hope. Stay lifted. <laughs>